And I'm also curious too, like, so you come out of, you're making 33K, let's say 35,000 at the peak coming out of the job. What was your credit limit um, to, to, to go to the 30K? Oh, I had like multiple credit cards. You had multiple credit cards. Eh? Yeah, I had, and I have really good credit. I've okay. always kind of, um, I had like a boyfriend for quite a bit of time and mm -hmm. um, he didn't necessarily have the best credit. So mm -hmm. he would like finance a lot of stuff under my name which really built my credit. He mm. paid it all, so like, okay. yeah, shout out to him for that one thing. But like, yeah, he financed a lot of stuff, like furniture for a whole house, mm -hmm. things like that. So I had like really good credit. You got points too? Yeah. Like credit card points? Yes, like, exactly. Say, yeah. But lots of these were like store finance cards, like, you uh, know, the like brick, a, like a Leon's, Leon's, all of those kind of things. Future Shop. Yes, I mean, exactly. Best Buy now. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I used to, I had a lot of credit through that. So I had a few credit cards and then also lines of credit mm. so when like the debt was getting accumulated i would bounce it around which is also a way that i paid it down i i got a credit card that had like a balance transfer thing where you would pay two percent to transfer your balance and then pay no interest for like a year so then i would like pay that down and then i had a really low interest line of credit so i would move money into that and then pay it down from there so mm. the money was moving around to the path of least interest mm -hmm. as much as possible and then i was paying it down so that most of my money is going to capital and not interest for most of it most definitely it's a gem yeah it's a gem yes yeah. move it around move that money around yes and pay off the highest robbing, interest for <laughs> as i say robbing peter to pay paul <laughs> yeah no, no essentially essentially yeah when like the credit card uh, the like pay no interest for a year one if it was coming up and i had a little bit left i would just use the line of credit to pay it off and then Nash move the money to li line of credit pay a little bit of a lower interest rate than like a credit card itself but not as good as zero and just keep moving mm. it around until i got to the end most definitely now <laughs> Honestly, I think that's what the name of the podcast is going to be. You know, I quit my job with no savings. Here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> name of the podcast. Right? The Wild that West. going to go viral. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think you brought up a great point here, like, on how to, like, move around money. Uh, so how many credit cards did you have? At uh, that time. At that time. I had an RBC one, then a BMO one. Did I have a charger? RBC BMO. I think two at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have like a, a like an out plan of like let's say an Excel sheet of like different no. things of like what you can do like we because I think a lot of our audience they might be in a similar position it might not be thirty k but fifteen k but what are some practical steps you can share with people to move money around to pay debt like mm. simple stuff like for example in your position and what other thing you did. So I'm, I've never been an Excel person. Mm -hmm. It's, and I'll say I have more gems now than I did in the midst of it. Yes. It was just kind of vibes. <laughs> but You're going with the flow. Yes, I was just going with the flow and moving. Blind faith. Like, yeah. I believe in walking off of the edges of cliffs and landing in purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, like, the story of what I did. Not for everybody. <laughs> Not for everybody. But I'd say really figure out how much you owe. Like, look at all the numbers. Don't, it's like, because at some points I would look at my, maybe my BMO account to go pay something. And I'd see like, oh, 25,000 or like 18,000. And then I just close in. Then maybe when I'm in RBC, I'd see that. But I wouldn't necessarily add it all together to see what it all is. I'll just kind of sheepishly look at it as I'm trying to avoid it. Um, bring it all together. Look at it for what it is because if you don't see it fully you're not even going to be able to acknowledge mm -hmm. how much the how high the mountain is that you need to overcome mm -hmm. and look for those accounts like look for the low rate i think right now mbna is an online bank that offers that credit card transfer tangerine also has a mastercard that offers that credit transfer bmo has it every so often those are three canadian banks that have it i know city financial in the states also mm -hmm. offers that credit transfer look for that and if you have good credit and you can also get a line of credit with a really low interest rate also look for that mm -hmm. you know try to get your money to the path of least interest and whatever is still stuck in the high interest space pay that off first because especially with adding a new credit card i remember mbna only gave me like four thousand five hundred yeah even though my credit's good but they're new they have no rapport with me they're not going to give me a lot mm -hmm. i moved all of that like i maxed it because if i'm paying zero interest on um 4500 that is a lot of money to not have to worry about. Even if I'm just chucking in $20 a month into there and I can move like maybe 300 into something else, you know? So find it and be honest with yourself. Yeah. Until you're honest and you acknowledge, then you can 
move all the things that you've sweeped under the rug, look at it for what it is and start like chipping away at it. Because at the end of the day, it's dollar by dollar. But consistency compounded over time will get you to where you want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, in terms of getting the credit too, how, like what space in between getting each card did you do it like? Because from talking to a lot of financial people, they say if you're going to, if you're getting credit after credit, it can look bad on your credit report. Mm. So I'm curious to understand how you cultivated it to like get multiple cards within like a period of time. Like was it under one year? Was it a year and a half? Like what was like your strategy behind that? Actually, luckily enough, the only one that I really had to apply for was mm. the MBNA because MBNA, okay. so I, as I said, I had my baking business. Mm -hmm. So because I had my baking business, I had opened a tangerine account, okay. like just a free checking account with tangerine because I wanted like my money going to different places. So like yes. my treats by Tokes, whenever you paid it, e-transfer would go into that mm -hmm. account. So because I already had that credit history with them, mm -hmm. they just pre-approved me for a credit card and a line of credit. Mm -hmm. My RBC is what I've been with since I was like 13 years yeah. old or like 14 years old when I got my first job at Wonderland. Mm -hmm. So they already approved me for a credit card. So that's what I was using. Then when I started working at BMO, you have to get a, a card an account because they're not going to pay your direct deposit into another bank's mm -hmm. account. Mm -hmm. So because I was working with them, they offered me the credit card. Exactly. So for me, the only one I applied for was the MBNA when they sent like a letter. Like you, I think it was when they were fairly new and they were just trying to get people on. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, balance transfer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I just got that one. But I wasn't applying for them back to back because they were kind of all available. But when yes. I was like, it's time for me to pay this down and be strategic. What do I have available to me? That's when I started realizing all the tools I already had in my toolbox, but now finally using them effectively. Nice, nice. Now, you jumped your cost per hour significantly, as we just mentioned, right? Could you walk us through some like, tips people could take away from how you were able to do that? I'd say... Even if you're somewhere that you don't care to be long term, don't waste the moment that you're there. I believe every single part of our life, every single journey we go through is intended to teach us something. And if you do not take that lesson from that place because you're trying to get to the next place, one, you'll continue to repeat that cycle over and over. And two, when you get to the space you ultimately want to be at, you're not going to have the tools necessary to sustain it. So I knew that maybe my intention wasn't to stay at this spot long but i'm like okay i am directly reporting to my vp who gets that opportunity my role is net new no one has ever done it before mm -hmm. he hired me because of my of everything else i do like i it wasn't a role luckily where i had to hide the fact that i had a life outside of it that was actually flourishing and doing some cool things which is um something that a lot of people have to do and i've also had had to do but I brought up skills and I found gaps in my business and their business that were aligned that could be of benefit to them. Every single thing that I told them that we should add or every suggestion I made or every room I asked to be a part of, I made it worth their while to have me there. Um, Strategy is a really big thing that I enjoy doing. And I like told my VP, like, if you have any strategy sessions, anything like that, pull me in. They pulled me into a strategy session. It was just myself, my VP, and a director in there strategizing with this external company on how to build out their like inclusion strategy. And then boom, that's something to add to the resume, you know? So speaking up, you have to advocate for yourself. Like closed mouths get fed scraps. Mm -hmm. you, eventually you're gonna be so hungry that you're gonna pick up everything that's left. But if you know what you want and you go in with confidence, and you're going to make those people who are going to put their name on the line for you look good, you're, you're going to get everything you want, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to be here. I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I'm going to make it worth every single moment of the time. And when I leave, they're going to adore me because I'm going to leave a legacy behind. And I'm also going to go away with all the tools required to get me to my next level. Mm -hmm. 